Lesson 9, 7th grade. This is on adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions. And then also we're going to learn a little bit about reciprocals. I don't know if you remember that from last year. Okay? Remember Let's start with this, okay? If I was going to be adding a fraction, for example, earlier the other day we were doing portions of a line. Remember that? Okay? And so let's say this was 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. And this is 1 and 4 eighths of an inch. And I wanted to know how long this whole thing is. Not just from here to here or from here to here, but I want to know from here to here. What you would do is what? You'd add them. Yes, you would and add them. 2 and 7 eighths. Very good. So, very good, Isaac. So you would line up 1 and 3 eighths plus 1 and 4 eighths. Okay? You always want to line up your fractions in one side and your whole numbers on the other. Okay? Now, to remember, when whenever you add fractions, you keep they the have to be the same denominator. This is the denominator, and they have to be the same. If they're not the same, we have to go through a whole totally different thing. Okay? So because they are the same, we just bring it down. Okay? Now we have to add up our, do you remember what this number is called? Numerator. Numerator. Very good. So 4 plus 3 is? 7. 7. Very good. All right. And once you get your fraction answer, then you add your whole numbers. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the final answer here will be 2 and 7 eighths. Okay? Very good, Isaac. Okay. Now, let's do one that has percentage. Okay? And I asked you to add 33 and 1 third percent. Plus 33 and one third percent. What would you do here, Isaac? I'd line them up, okay. which is what you did. Okay. And okay. then I'd add the numerators and bring down the denominator. Okay, so because the denominators are the same, we're going to bring it down. Okay, and you said to add the numerators. One plus numerators. one is two. Excellent job. Now, once we have our fraction answer, now we're going to answer our whole numbers. Right. Three plus three is. 6, 3 plus 3 is 6. Our final answer is 66 and 2 thirds. You got it? Yep. Pretty easy, huh? All right, now, because we're working with percents, let's go on and look at a circle. What is a whole circle? What is the percentage of that? Zero. No, full. Full. No, how much percent, though? 100%. 100%. Very good. No matter what, a full circle filled in is 100%. Okay? So if I were to divide this into four, and I said I have four out of four, what am I actually saying? You've got 100%. I have a whole, one whole, okay? So as you can see, the fraction four, four actually equals one whole. Do you see that, Isaac? Yep. Very good. All right, now, so if I took, for example, um, Okay, woo! Now, um, if I had three pieces of pie here, okay, and I had two pieces of pie here, what that would look like mathematically is this. Three out of five plus two out of five, okay? Mm -hmm. And my final answer would be what? Five out of five. Well, I have five as my denominator, so I just bring it down or over, and then three plus two is five. So as we can see, we have five out of five because, watch this, if I take these two pieces out of this pie and put it here, and then take this piece and put it here, how many pieces of pie do I have? Five. Five out of five. And five out of five equals one whole. That whole pie is full. Got it? Understand it? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's talk about subtracting fractions, okay? Not that much difference. Again, the denominator still has to be the same, okay? So let's subtract this. We have this mixed number, 3 and 5 ninths, minus 1 and 1 ninths, okay? Again, my denominators are the same, so what do I do with it? You bring it down. Just bring it down, okay? And then because I'm working with subtraction, I'm going to take 5 minus 1, which would give me 4. 4, very good. 
And so now that I have my answer for my fraction, now I just subtract my whole numbers. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay? So our final answer is 2 and 4 ninths. All right? Let's look at another one. 3 fifths minus 3 fifths. Okay? This one kind of might look confusing, but it's actually quite simple, okay? We would say that this 5 is the denominator, so therefore we're going to move it over, okay? But 3 minus 3 is 0. So anytime you get 0 on your denominator, your actual answer is going to be 0. Because what I'm saying is I have... 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, it's not completely even. Just stay with me. Okay, so if I have 3, 1, 2, 3 out of 5... And then I take away 3 out of 5, how much do I have? Nothing. Okay? You understand? Yep. So, 0 is the answer. So if you get 0 over 5, just make sure you're putting 0. Alright, next thing. Multiplying fractions. Now, this isn't that much harder, but where you could possibly get confused is when you're multiplying fractions, it's completely different than when you're adding or subtracting fractions. So, I don't know if you remember this or not. But last year, let's say I was doing one half times one half. And sometimes you may see a dot there. That means times as well. Okay? Now, you do not have to have the same denominator when you're working with multiplication. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would just literally um, multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So it's real simple. One times one is one. And two times two is four. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Okay? Now, sometimes you will hear in math people say the word of. Okay? And so, for example, what is half of a half? So let's say I had a half of a cup, and I wanted to know what half of a half of a cup is. Okay? Of in math means what? Multiplication. Multiplication. Very good. Okay? And we would perform the same problem. So half of a half is one-fourth of a cup. Very good. All right. Now, if I asked you to find the product, what am I asking you to find? The answer to a multiplication problem. The answer to a multiplication problem. Okay. So if I asked you to find half of a third of a cup, what would you do? I'd have a multiplication one multiplication problem. I want to be one half times one third. Very good. Okay. And tell me how I would answer this problem. One times one. One which times one equals one. Uh huh. And then three times two, which equals six, which would be one six. Very good. Final answer: one six. Okay. Now, let's look at this. Okay. Now, this doesn't make it too much harder, but sometimes you'll have more than two fractions. Sometimes you will have three fractions. Okay? And to answer this problem, you would just go 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 1 is 3. Then let's multiply the denominators. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40. And our final answer would be 3 40s. 40. Okay? Got it? Mm -hmm. Alright. Now, when I say the word reciprocal, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like the same thing. I, I remember it last year. I don't remember like what it means. You're kind of getting, I think you're going to say what I think you're going to say. Okay. A reciprocal would be like this. If I had um, two thirds, oh, the reciprocal yeah, of that would three, be three over two. Three over two. So you basically just switch the numbers around. You would invert them. Remember how we talked about inversions? Okay. So they would actually turn around. Okay. Now, sometimes, let's look at this reciprocal. What would one half's reciprocal be? Two over one. Two over two. one, which is the same four. thing as whole two. So sometimes they may give you a whole number four and tell you to find the reciprocal. So what would your first step be if I told you to find the reciprocal of four? Uh, that'd be four over one, which would be one four. Right. That four is the same thing as four over one, okay? And then if we made it a reciprocal, it would be one four. Very good, okay? Good job remembering that. Now. Um, did you know that when you multiply fractions that are reciprocal, do you remember what happens? It has the same answer. It always has the same answer. So watch this. Three-fourths, and I'm going to multiply it by its invert or reciprocal, which would be four-thirds. So I'll get three times four is twelve, 
4 times 3 is 12. And what is 12 over 12? One. One hope. So no matter how you multiply, when you multiply reciprocals, your answer will always be one. one. Excellent job. Okay? It's good to know. Okay? Especially in what we're going to be learning in just a minute. Okay? So here's my next problem. Watch this. Three fourths, and it's got an N equals one. Now, what does this fraction or number next to a multiplication? Letter call mean. It means multiplication. So what this is actually saying is three fourths times n. So it's saying three fourths times what equals one. And what did I tell you? It'd be reciprocal of three fourths, which would be four thirds. Very good. So he's saying that it would be four thirds because we know that that multiplied by this always equals one. Excellent job, Isaac. Good job. Okay. Sometimes you may get a question like this. How many three-fourths are in one whole. Okay, so we've got three-fourths equals one whole. So what they're asking is, is what would you multiply this by to get one whole? Four-thirds. It would be four-thirds. Very good. The answer here would be four-thirds. Excellent job. Okay, so the main thing for you to remember when you start doing... Um, Multiplying fractions and adding fractions, Isaac, is you have to realize that they are two separate procedures. And what do you need to remember about adding or subtracting fractions? Um, that you just bring down the denominator. No. Well, sort of, yes, yes. But you have to have the same, same denominator. Yes, that's the key. Same denominator in adding and subtracting. Subtract and add fractions, okay? That's the key. You have to know that. Do I have to have the same in multiplying fractions? No. No. Multiplying doesn't matter. No, it does not. Does not matter, okay? You do not have to have the same denominator. All right, that's lesson nine.